let me do a quick introduction to, to Stavros. So this is called, again, Every Time I Hire a Linguist, Emergent Tech Profiles for Linguists, Translators, and Language Experts, the report on upskills. My name is Laurel Sutton. I'm your host here. Uh, our support person is Marcus Robinson. So you can reach out to him. He's monitoring the chat and he'll be dropping links in. Brief description of what this panel is about. The Upskills Project is an Erasmus Plus strategic partnership in the EU, so we're getting a European perspective here. It's for higher education that seeks to identify and tackle the gaps and mismatches in skills for linguistics and language students through the development of a new curriculum component and supporting materials to be embedded in existing programs of study. The recent Upskills Needs Analysis, which was done via survey, explored the current academic offer in language and linguistics related fields and the requirements the job market has for graduates in these areas. And the analysis highlighted the need for a new skill set and a new mind frame to meet the demands as well as the professional challenges of the industry. And our presenter for this hour is Stavros Asimakopoulos from the University of Malta. So take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, well, let me wish you, most of you, good morning, I guess, where you are. Uh, it's, after, it's early afternoon here in, in the Mediterranean. I would like to first of all thank uh, Laurel and all the organizers for their kind invitation. Uh, it's actually really exciting for me to be able to share uh, all these, uh, like our first results from the project with you. Uh, before I start, I'd better explain a little bit uh, the title. Uh, probably, uh, oops. Oh, anyway, yeah. Uh, so basically, there's this uh, well known uh, phrase. Um, uh, you know, that was produced by Fred Zelinek in 1980s, uh, where he said, every time I fire a linguist, the performance of our speech recognition system goes up. So there, this actually, um, well, this has been misquoted many times and whatnot. I mean, the idea back then was that uh, perhaps uh, artificial intelligence and technology in general uh, can actually, um, uh, you know, surpass the need for human intervention when it comes to analysis of data and whatnot. Uh, obviously, Fred himself, the late Fred, uh, and uh, and everyone these days actually disagrees with uh, with this. Uh, it is essential that uh, human intervention is there, even when we're dealing with uh, with big data, because you know, unsupervised systems don't work as well as supervised ones do. Um, so basically, uh, uh, our uh, title, my title in this talk is uh, a word play on every time I fire a linguist with what we were trying to do, uh, the upskills project, uh, what, what we're trying to do at the upskills project is to identify what are the, the, the skills uh, that are needed uh, for students, for graduates of linguistics and language related uh, disciplines in order to be able um, to, to find employment, especially in the industry uh, sector. Uh, and this is something that actually is quite uh, Topical, I think, when it comes to this distinction, uh, to this discussion. Uh, so basically, this is a meme that, uh, that was created. So job title, linguist, the guy's smiling, and then desired qualifications, degree in computer science. And then suddenly, you know, it becomes a bit like, wow, that's not a linguist then. Uh, so basically, what we're trying to do uh, in upskills is to sort of gap these two fields to a certain extent. Uh, by um, also identifying what kind of skills uh, students need in order to be able to you know, to make it in big corporations or companies that have to do with language technology. Uh, now, just a, a bit of information, this talk and all the materials that are presented here is a joint effort. Uh, this is an Erasmus Plus strategic partnership. We've received some funding from the EU to conduct the research that we're doing and to develop the materials that we'll eventually do. We are a consortium of eight partners. Six of us, we are, I'm, I'm the project leader and Dalta is the coordinator of the project, but the University of Belgrade, University of Bologna, uh, Clary Neric, uh, an infrastructure um, consortium, uh, University of Graz and University of Vijeka received funding from the Erasmus Plus um, uh, funding stream. And then uh, the Swiss, our Swiss partners, um, uh, Geneva and Zurich, University of Geneva and University of Zurich have received funding from the equivalent of the Erasmus Plus uh, in Switzerland. Uh, so this is all a collective effort and everything you're going to see is actually, you know, the, the slides have been prepared by all of us rather than just me alone. I'm just representing the consortium. So as Laurel has um, actually already uh, said, our main aim is to tackle the skills gaps and mismatches in students of language related disciplines. Uh, and our point here is to, to somehow manage and create a better workforce. Uh, how are we going to, like, what's the rationale behind uh, this uh, project? Oh, my computer is slow, I think. 
Okay, okay. So uh, the rationale is that graduates of linguistics and language related degrees, again, I'm using this basic um, title because we're not talking about linguists only, we're also talking about translation students. Uh, we're interested in, in, in even in, in language degrees like English, French, Italian, and whatnot, uh, and how we can all, uh, you know, help uh, graduates from these uh, from these uh, paths to find a job in the industry. Uh, so they are needed in research and industry jobs. That's that's uh, that that will become clear by the end of this talk. Uh, however, what they sometimes lack uh, are uh, problem solving skills. Uh, data analysis knowledge, like how to deal with data and how to actually curate data in order um, to, um, to, to, to fit into systems. Uh, project management skills, which was quite a surprising thing, as you'll see, uh, because we didn't anticipate this to be so central uh, in business. Uh, and of course, and what we'll be focusing on most, ah, sorry, apologies, my computer is slow, uh, digital skills. And what our main uh, aim in this project is to sort of incorporate in higher education curricula these uh, sort of skills and competencies that will allow students to get um, jobs easier. I think from a student's perspective, this is also important in the sense that, you know, our research should be able to show you what actually is needed in the industry and what kind of skills you can uh, develop in order to have better chances at following a career in the industry. Uh, so, uh, how are we going to do that in the project? Uh, basically, we want to develop uh, modular learning units that can be incorporated in different uh, courses at higher education institutions, ours to begin with, and then obviously they would be shared by, uh, with, with everyone else. Uh, we want to also introduce innovative pedagogies and we want to, um, to really sort of flip the model from the traditional lecturing uh, setting uh, and um, promote active learning. Uh, so we're trying to, um, to engage, you know, students using online educational games and this sort of thing. Uh, then we focus very specifically, and you'll see why also from the needs analysis on task-based learning. Uh, so we, we believe that education should also uh, have uh, some relevance to what you might actually face at work. Um, and then uh, we also want to promote the integration of existing infrastructures into teaching. Like there are all these sort of like freeware and software uh, out there that you know you could actually use for your learning experience and it's not being used as much at least in the eu i mean i can talk about that so if my computer allows this okay so what are we expecting to get out of this so basically our aim is multifold like first of all we want to prepare students for what they're going to face in the job market and you'll see some quite surprising uh, results i think from what uh, follows here uh, then we also want like one like our, our one immediate target group is students the most immediate target group but we also want to use this project to sensitize academics uh, with respect to the actual skills that employers are looking for because you know there there is a case there are cases many cases in at university level when you know the, the lecturers and, and the tutors and, and everyone are, are just uh, navigating the class within their disciplinary boundaries but then they don't really take into account what you know possibly your employer is going to look for afterwards uh, then a very very important to, to, it's very close to my heart at least is that we want to raise awareness among employers about the skills and aptitudes of uh, graduates of linguistics and language related degrees because there seems that in the industry people don't really know what linguistics is about. And this is something that we hope to fix. And, you know, we're partnering up with a lot of, with a lot of companies to do that. Uh, we also then want to create engaging modular learning content that will obviously be open access and then uh, accessible to everyone. And we want to promote active learning, uh, task and research-based learning rather than the traditional, you know, I'm teaching you and you're just getting, um, you know, you're just, uh, 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 getting the knowledge through a lecture. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Uh, we, we have um, organized our analysis and our research around four main intellectual outputs. First, we conducted the needs analysis. We concluded the needs analysis uh, last month, uh, and this is what we're going to be talking about uh, today. Uh, then we want to create guidelines on how to better teach students, better prepare them for employment. Uh, then we want to consolidate and create learning content uh, that will be then shared with our institutions and beyond. Uh, and then we want to see how we can include educational games in order to facilitate active learning. Uh, so uh, you may have missed 
well, it's actually not a TP that you've missed it because you're, you're going to get like a big overview today. But we had our first multiplier event in Bologna, but there are three more to come. There is a very high chance that this will happen also online or it will be posted online. So, you know, uh, feel free to, to look us up and, and, and follow us. Um, and with all this will culminate in a summer school that will take place in Serbia in July 2023, uh, where we will be testing our materials and you know, the whole project will conclude. Uh, okay, so basically uh, what I'm going to go through uh, is, is that the different steps that we took in order to identify these particular skills that are needed for students and, and also uh, to give you a bit of an overview of what I guess is expected uh, from a European perspective, at least I can speak about Europe, even though we did have some participants from the US uh, as well. Uh, so uh, we, we went through three basic steps before identifying the profiles that are most needed uh, in the industry. These days, I'm going to go quickly through them and then we'll uh, sort of discuss the profiles that we came up with. Uh, the first step, uh, and that's because basically we're going to be developing content of our own, uh, was to survey existing educational curricula and see whether the skills that we're looking for, uh, like that we believe that the industry looks for, uh, is looking for, uh, can be found in these in existing programs uh, within the European Union. Uh, basically, what we uh, when we applied for the project, what we wanted to focus on was research skills, data acquisition skills, and data curation skills, like how to deal with big data, data handling skills as well. And then we wanted to also see um, how much, uh, you know, linguistic theory and research management in general uh, features in existing degrees uh, in order to, to identify what is the current state of the art uh, in education. Uh, we went through uh, a number of European Bachelor and Master's degrees, we created the purpose of them, and uh, we based this basically on the QS World University rankings in the areas of linguistics and modern languages. Basically, we, we came up with a list, we, yeah, we, we uh, developed a list of 535 degrees, uh, and um, uh, out of this list, like which, which are practically all the uh, degrees in languages and linguistics that you can find in Europe. Uh, and then uh, we, we, in order to analyze the curriculum more uh, to the point, we selected 122 degrees, which were our representative sample. And then we, we also conducted a mini study focusing even more on 12 degrees in order to see what kind of career paths there are. Uh, focusing on and whatnot. This is just for your information, I mean, for what would interest you in this regard is the extent to which existing curricula uh, cover what we believe that, uh, that the industry needs. And it seems that our, the focus competencies I referred to before are only represented in just a quarter of all the degrees, which means that basically most degrees are within disciplinary boundaries and do not really um, look to develop uh, particular technical skills, digital skills, transversal skills, things that, you know, would be useful from an industry uh, industrial perspective. Then we also, because our focus is more into technology and digital literacy and this sort of thing, uh, we figured that we, we also identified that programming, machine learning and linguistic theory or interaction of all these uh, almost exclusively, but we'll say predominantly because there are some exceptions, uh, can be found in uh, master's levels. Uh, uh, courses. Uh, and then when we went through all the curricula uh, that we gathered, uh, we saw that uh, we, we, you know, the, our experts in the team identified the three pillars of making a useful um, degree for uh, graduates uh, to be, to keep the degree flexible, to keep it modular so that people have a choice of which direction to follow and to also keep it diverse in the coverage of areas. And you'll see why uh, by looking at the, the titles of the degrees that we gathered for our corpus, uh, we can see that, you know, this is a nice word cloud here that we created. Uh, and we can see that obviously linguistics and languages and language are the most important ones or particular languages like English and whatnot. But you can also see that there is a sort of turn uh, at, at university level to incorporate things like business uh, and enterprise and this sort of thing, mediation, technology, you know, you can find keywords even in the titles, which means that, you know, there is already this sort of um, trend uh, to go towards um, the, the workplace, so to say, when devising uh, particular courses. Okay, and then when it comes to future career prospects, uh, uh, we also identified, we also found out that 
most of the degrees that we were looking for, uh, that we were looking at, uh, did not actually include any particular career path advice. Uh, and, you know, just one of the exceptions was that from uh, the Royal Holloway University of London, uh, where again, even though, you know, there is a description of, uh, of how you're going to find employment after studying linguistics, uh, there, um, it's kept rather general rather than more specific. Uh, so as a modern linguist, you'll have excellent communication, analytical and research skills combined with proven ability to communicate fluently alongside practical skills such as translation and interpretation. You will have developed the kind of sensitivity to different cultures that is highly prized in the workplace. However, again, it doesn't give you like a particular route or choice of routes that you would be able to follow after graduation. Uh, so this is something that we want to generally fix, uh, let's sort of, sort of say, with our own project. Um, okay, then the next step, uh, and this is, uh, I guess, the only, the, the last boring bit of, of what we did, uh, we had to go back to the literature and, and figure out uh, how, you know, what exactly is um, considered, you know, the best, um, you know, preparation in higher education for you to get a, a career. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, we looked at language industry surveys, a whole bunch of them. These are some representative examples. We also looked at institution position papers and reports, and we inevitably also looked at colleagues' work, academic works, and what how they suggest that you know education can lead to a successful career, particularly specifically in relation to linguistics. Uh, so to take them one at a time, in turn, I think it's a Okay, so let's start up with key themes in the language industry. I do apologize, there was supposed to be a transition here, but you know, the PDF doesn't work. Uh, so looking at language industry surveys, uh, the general trend seems to be, and this is actually uh, identified you know, from a quote here, uh, that uh, for example, in the domain of translation services, and more generally when it comes to you know, pure linguistic work that has to do with content creation and whatnot, prices for basic translation services are and will keep plummeting, while those for ancillary services will become more enumerative due to lower availability of adequately, adequately skilled resources. This effectively means that even though you are starting to become a linguist or you are starting to become a translator and whatnot, chances are that you might not actually do exactly what you've started to do. Um, chances are that you will be in a position where you will have to curate and sort of oversee um, uh, um, the lower level work that might be done by machines and whatnot. Uh, so what seems to be important in the language industry service, which are dedicated for companies in the business world, is that uh, the most important things are datafication and, and data management. So there is a huge need, and actually it, it has been noted time and again in these reports, uh, that you know salaries are going really high up when it comes to people who can manage data and analyze data and whatnot. Uh, there is a huge need for, for uh, all the more, um, uh, all the better machine translation uh, software. Uh, digital marketing and content creation is also on the rise. Uh, and then uh, some more uh, general sort of roles that linguists uh, would be um, uh, yeah, would be very suitable for our project management positions and positions that have to do with customer care, client uh, relations, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, also, linguists and language specialists are very much preferred when it comes to quality control, control processes. So even when it comes to, let's say, you know, you have a system that creates a translation automatically, and then you have to sort of proof it in order to identify uh, what it is. Um, and one, another important uh, um, thing that, another important thing that came up through our analysis uh, has to do with the dimension of gender. Uh, and basically it seems that even in the language industry that the often noted gap between uh, men and, and women uh, remains. I mean, even though there are a lot more women working in this particular industry, the salary gap uh, remains quite considerable, and it seems that uh, men are preferred for in-house jobs. So this is something that we also want to tackle and sort of sensitize companies to, to, to avoid. Um, then when it comes to, to institutional themes, um, again, here what we have is, you know, a verification of our original, uh, uh, you know, thought that, uh, Basically, the easier the task that has to do with language, the, the more likely it will be to be taken over by, by machines, by an intelligent system and whatnot. 
Uh, and uh, basically this leads us to the conclusion that when, as we're moving on in the 21st century and whatnot, the most important skills uh, would be not just to translate or analyze or whatnot, but to basically critically process information in conjunction with others uh, and by using machines uh, as well. Uh, and obviously UNESCO also you know, uh, highlights entrepreneurship as a particularly important aspect of um, um, uh, for, for you know for for, for employment opportunities. Uh, then uh, turning to uh, the European Commission's report, uh, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, communication, collaboration, data literacy, and basic understanding of AI are considered indispensable for the market. So we can easily see, like even from this stage, that you know digital skills become quite important quite early on, and and you know it seems that education needs to follow through and sort of prepare students. Uh, by giving them the right uh, means to understand AI, not to do AI, but basically to understand and be able, you know, to be cognizant of the rules and, and be able to work with that. Uh, then when it comes to language education and more generally what we are interested in as academics, uh, the basic problem that, that is always identified and with which we agree as well is that there is a, a quite significant branding problem for linguistics and language degrees. I mean, usually when someone needs a linguist, there, are, there is a good chance that if they're not you know, familiar with linguistics and whatnot, they won't even know what linguistics is about. So one of the things that we are aiming for at the project and one of the things that we think should, you know, the whole like educational system should aim for is to sensitize uh, the industry and companies with regards to the particular skills that the linguist has. And, and as you'll see later on from our focus interviews, these skills are really highly you know, required in the industry. Uh, uh, then um, another important um, aspect that's raised by the institutional reports uh, is that when you're studying linguistics, you're not necessarily, and I'm pretty sure that this will have come up you know, quite a few times in the discussions over the last few days, uh, which I, I watched the recording of the versions, but anyway, uh, so you're not, you don't, you know, you're studying linguistics, you're expecting to work as a linguist, but chances are you won't work specifically on the particular topic that you uh, focused on to begin with, right? Um, and then uh, there is also a mention that of, of language services and especially technologically supported and, uh, you know, AI-based language services that are growing. And, and this is a a pattern that we also noticed even in our survey and in later um, as well. And then finally, when it comes to academic research in the area, if my computer, key academic things, uh, basically what is identified in the literature, in the academic literature in the field is that there are currently, and you know, within the 21st century, we, we see the emergence of new roles for language experts. And, uh, and these roles are not necessarily, you know, the ones that you have traditionally thought about when studying linguistics, but they are things that you can consider as a possible career option, and actually a career option that will boost your career quite easily, quite early on, because these are uh, positions or, um, you know, expertise areas that, that that you know that, that nobody has at the moment. Like there are very few people, so you know they're very highly paid. So uh, you know becoming an advocate for multilingualism as a globalization tool, and this has to do with all sorts of uh, of, of platforms, even social media, uh, you know, and whatnot. Uh, then uh, managing large scale global initiatives that require trans creation. I mean, we do have even now in COVID times, obviously, you know, you, you have all these multilingual resources and rules and guidelines and whatnot, and linguists are needed for this sort of thing. Uh, so these are opportunities that we can capitalize on as, uh, as linguists. Then bringing linguistic knowledge to interdisciplinary teams of developers and service providers so that they can design and adapt AI systems to the needs of new registers, styles, and languages. The problem here, the problem, I think that the challenge here is that generally you have teams of dedicated marketing, you know, advertising companies and whatnot, uh, who are doing their thing. But then as linguists, we do have the sensitivity by having studied interculturality, by having studied different registers and styles to sort of give them information about how they can target a group more specifically. So this is another role that, you know, seems to be emerging 
uh, as a byproduct of your linguistics training, so to say. And then obviously, and this was actually underlined by, I think an 85 to 90% of all our employees, linguists are needed not just to program and you know, run the AI stuff, but to evaluate AI technologies. So basically, uh, for example, if you have like a machine, an automatic machine translation uh, system, you know, somebody needs to check that it works well. And, you know, who better to check that than a professional translator, let's say, right? Uh, or someone who speaks the language and knows how to analyze it so that they can pinpoint what the problem is with the AI system. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, basically, you know, and then another, and I'll just, you know, I'll quickly go over this. Uh, another important aspect of, uh, of, of the literature is that they do seem to, you know, to, to promote and they, they want to advance uh, the notion of research-based curricula, of project-based uh, work where students are engaged and they also develop a lot of important transversal skills like collaboration skills, data management skills, um, you know, and, and whatnot, so that they can sort of, so that education sort of mimics the, um, you know, the, the, the environment that you're going to face in, in your workplace. Yeah. So our third step, and this is, you know, where we went deep into the actual world of, of business and whatnot, and we wanted to check, you know, how the employment markets views linguists, um, you know, combines three types of research that we carried out, three types of studies. Uh, first of all, we analyzed job ads uh, that were posted online. Then we went through, uh, we sent out surveys and uh, to, to companies and we targeted managers basically so as to get a bit of, of, of a more nuanced uh, idea of how you know they view linguistics and what they need from a linguistics graduate, and then finally before we 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 did run uh, twelve uh, focus interviews with representatives from this com com uh, from these companies, all of whom were you know general managers and above. Uh, so let me start off quite quickly with uh, the Corvus-based analysis of job ads. Basically, we collected a bunch of robots. I'll go quickly because I think I'm running out of time uh, and I have to, to, to focus on the profiles then. Uh, we, we, we looked at the skills and competencies that are mentioned as requirements uh, in, in particular job posts. And we also looked to see what are the tasks that are usually associated with a position for a linguist. Uh, our sources were from all over the place, you know, linguist list, career linguist, LinkedIn, like general purpose employment platforms, technological companies like Amazon, Apple, Google, and whatnot. Uh, and we did select, given our focus on digital literacy, we did select uh, we did select all the jobs that involve language and linguistics related tasks that require some digital um, competence or research skills uh, in order to um, to get the position. Uh, so we didn't um, we didn't include in our search just content creation uh, jobs uh, or just translation jobs per se, but you know translation jobs that require cut knowledge like uh, cut to automatic computer assisted uh, translation technology. Uh, and we also um, uh, excluded um, all the job ads where a degree uh, in, in one of the STEM fields was a requirement rather than a degree in linguistics. So we want to focus solely on those companies that really look for linguists and, and you know, what they're after, basically. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a... Uh, uh, yeah, we, we gathered 200, almost 200 job ads from 112 companies, and, and you can find, the, you will find in the, in the slides uh, the actual link to the corpus if you want to play around with it. Uh, generally, when it comes to formal education requirements, uh, it seems that 40% um, uh, of, the, of the jobs that we looked at, approximately 40% of the jobs are looking for someone with at least a bachelor's degree uh, in uh, linguistics or language related area. 35% uh, uh, actually you know, are looking for a master's degree and only 10% are looking for PhD. Uh, people uh, combining the bachelor and the masters, like you know, 58.9% of all the job posts uh, required either a bachelor or a master, which means that there is still a healthy absorption of students with just a bachelor's degree uh, in the industry. Uh, then, when it comes to skills, competencies, and tasks, the most uh, important, I would say, the most uh, transparent, like skills and competencies that we uh, identified in the job posts. 
uh, where data skills and research skills where uh, you know, uh, potential employees will be requested to analyze data, to collect data, extract information, and also to conduct research, market research or whatnot, because we're talking about the business world, obviously, and then support research and development of a particular product. Then technical skills are always underlined, but this is also, you know, a, a byproduct of, of our selection criteria of jobs. Uh, knowledge of a programming language, and it seems that in, more often than not, this is Python these days, um, uh, the ability to build language models, the ability to analyze tests or improve performance of tools. And this relates actually to the, you know, to, to, to the sort of consultant role rather than the programming role that the linguist can have that I mentioned before. And then uh, when it comes to disciplinary knowledge, you get the usual, you know, areas of linguistics with an emphasis on computation and LNP and localization, this sort of thing. But, you know, you, you also get posts for semantics, for discourse and, and whatnot. Uh, and obviously, you know, for, when it comes to transversal skills, communication and organizational skills are also quite uh, important. So you need uh, to have good communication skills. You need to be able to pay attention to detail, good organization skills. Uh, and this is actually really important. And I'm going to return to this later on. Ability to thrive in a fast-paced environment. And this is something that you probably know already, but you haven't, you know, you, 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 don't necessarily, you know, realize how important it is when it comes to uh, to, uh, to to you know to finding a job uh, in a company. So moving on, uh, on the basis of the of the corpus of, of job ads, we we then distribute the survey um, of the you know a survey to representatives from the business sector. Uh, we contacted seventy businesses. Uh, which range from language service providers to marketing and finance. So we, we tried to identify all sectors in which linguists are, are uh, employed. Uh, and, you know, you can see that there was a quite healthy uh, distribution, like um, uh, almost one third of our companies were just small companies, like of 10 employees, startups and whatnot. Uh, then another, the other third was large companies, you know, um, you know size of, of, of Google or, uh, or Lionsbridge or, you know, the big conglomerates and whatnot. And, and then the other third was small and medium ones. Um, and basically we, we did uh, for this, for the purpose of this, we communicated with employers from digital and data intensive sectors uh, who obviously do not necessarily identify language and linguistics graduates as their future employees, but could potentially consider them as well. So we, we, we looked for companies that have an interest in language, but not necessarily look for linguists in that respect, so as to get their opinion um, on, uh, on, on employment of linguistics graduates. Uh, now, 80% uh, of the people who communicate have dedicated positions that they explicitly assign or they, they require someone who also has a linguistics degree, uh, so to say. Uh, and then uh, what was really surprising was that 60% of the people we, um, we community contacted uh, said that their company plans to add more dedicated positions specifically for graduates. I won't say just linguistics, but also language experts. And there's a difference between a language expert and a native speaker of a language in this regard. Now, the main task, the main roles, as you can see here, that, be, that you know, exist uh, in these companies are uh, language specialists, obviously, you know, as a linguist, uh, computational linguist and language engineer, project manager and coordinator, but of linguistic data, analytical or data linguist and research associate. Now, the main tasks that these companies uh, require their employees uh, with a linguistics background to carry out is to be, you know, they, they want them to work with data, obviously language data. Uh, they also want them to be familiar with technological tools and software. Uh, and um, another important thing is that obviously communication, like they need to be part of a team to be able to communicate with the team and to also be able to communicate with clients and vendors. And this will relate a bit to uh, perhaps a misconception, like if you're if you're hired as a linguist, you're not going to be working just as a linguist. You will have multiple roles to fulfill uh, within uh, your your workplace. Uh, and obviously, you know, another important um, aspect uh, is is the ability to conduct research and to manage projects uh, that lead uh, to particular products. Then, if it okay. 
I will just skip this, I think. Then when it comes to skills, I mean, what we, what we did in the survey, we, we, we asked our um, respondents to identify the level of importance that each of these skills has, and then to also identify which of these areas need most improvement when it comes to linguistics graduates, as opposed to what computer, computer scientists or, or some other um, type of graduate. And it seems here that problem solving skills is actually the most important one alongside communicational skills, but problem solving skills, uh, which include independence and quick learning and, and, and versatility in taking decisions and whatnot, is the one that needs to be improved the most. In other cases, we found another notable um, result here is that creativity, for example, uh, was not deemed as important, but it was deemed as something that needs to be improved a lot. And we believe that this also has to do a bit with how uh, linguistic graduates, you know, follow a course that is just lecture based and, and whatnot. Um, then moving on to the knowledge and experience, uh, it seems, yeah, the linguistic knowledge is obviously the most important one, but it's also the one that doesn't need to be improved as much. What seems to be, uh, what was actually standing out throughout this process, and we hadn't even thought about it before applying for the project, is the project management is something that is considered essential. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with language, right? It's, 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 a, it's a more uh, general um, skill, so to say. Um, so in order to summarize a bit, it seems that the knowledge and experience that companies look for the most are, first of all, you're a linguist, so you need to be a specialist of language. And that doesn't necessarily mean of a specific language, but someone who can explain language or describe language in a very succinct way. Uh, then it's very important, you know, another part of knowledge and experience is the ability to not only translate, because we're not talking about only translators and interpreters, but also to localize content. Uh, so to, to, to bring it to the cultural standards of a particular community. And then obviously there is a, a huge uh, rise in, in computational uh, linguistics uh, positions as well, right? To be able to, to play around with tools, to engage even in AI and whatnot. Uh, then uh, the, um, the skills that are most uh, needed or, or you know, what you're expected to have at least some knowledge of uh, in order to be able to enter uh, the field would be data analysis and language technology tools. And this includes not just you being able to programming, but basically you being able to use tools that are available and you know, diversify them and sort of adapt them to their needs. Uh, programming is also quite important. Managing terminology or managing you know, big databases is also very important. Again, project management was you know, all over the place. And your knowledge of linguistics as expected is something that's highly valued. Uh, now here, the outlier for us was project management because we were assuming that you know this is not a role that would be tar targeting linguists per se. But the rationale of most of our responses was that project management is essential. Like their project managers should have a solid linguistics uh, background because they are the ones who oversee the whole process. So you know it's it's a role that's that's you know that that. that that is really important for the companies and something that the linguists can very easily get if they have the right qualifications, if they have the right skills uh, and aptitudes. Uh, so on the basis of this, um, uh, of this survey, we run a number of focus interviews with uh, job market stakeholders. Uh, we, we actually interviewed uh, for an hour each 12 job market stakeholders who came from 11 different companies, who came from the same one, but was a big multinational company, uh, and they participate in one-to-one -one interviews. Uh, the domains from which in which these uh, interviewees work uh, uh, vary. So we had uh, representatives of the lang of language service providers, of the automotive industry, uh, language technology, and even insurance uh, services. And the, the area of engagement was not just computational linguistics. Uh, we, we also had people from translation, localization companies, uh, or speech recognition and speech synthesis companies um, as well. Now, uh, what we focused on during these interviews were three main uh, questions. The first one has to do with oops, uh, the employability of the graduates. Now, this was supposed to be a bit more interactive, but in the PDF, it doesn't look as such, but anyway. So it seems I'll just take them. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'll just take them in turn. Uh, there is a healthy demand in the industry, and actually, if I may say so, uh, 
uh, most of the interviewees suggested that there will be a rising demand for linguists. Uh, and the important thing here is that even though there will be a rising demand for, it, for, for linguists, these linguists need to also have additional you know, skills. So apart from the specialized language related expertise, you also need, like a student of linguistics or a graduate of linguistics, would also need to have some technical know-how. We're not talking about high-level programming skills or you know uh, anything extravagant, but just a healthy knowledge of of how AI works or machine learning works or or, or you know how programming works, so that you can sort of ease into the position. Um, so the then the ability like. As a linguist, your basic trait would be that you are able to deal with ambiguous and unstructured data. So make sense of from, from a mess of language, you know, uh, how this particular system works and whatnot. Um, and then uh, another important thing that I also hinted at before is that people, linguists who, are, who seek to enter the, 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 you know, the industry for companies on language, uh, need to be willing to, to take on hybrid roles. So being hired as a linguist doesn't mean that you will work like uh, your 40 hour week just doing a linguistics task or a language related task. I mean, they need versatility in the sense that you might have to communicate uh, with clients. Uh, you, need, you might have to like set up meetings with the team and decide on different things and whatnot. So basically what they're looking for is someone who is technologically you know, cognizant, so they, they, they have some, some knowledge of, of technology and some digital you know, skills, uh, and also someone who has good organizational skills and can, you know, uh, uh, do like fulfill multiple roles uh, in the company. Uh, and then it seems that there is, uh, because that's another like aspect of, of most people who are working in the industry as linguists, uh, there seems to be an imbalance between uh, freelance opportunities and in-house full-time contracts. It seems that by being just a dedicated linguist who's just an expert on language and can only analyze the data and whatnot, uh, chances are that there will not be as many chances for you to get an in-house full-time employment uh, as opposed to doing freelance work, which is, again, you know, uh, there are many companies that employ freelancers and you will never starve, but again, there's no job security per se in that. Uh, so it seems that digital literacy and the ability to work with tools and whatnot is quite important actually uh, for this sort of thing. Then when it comes to most out, most sought out skills and knowledge, I'll just skip this slide and you can look at it later on. Uh, and the third question, which was really important for us, and I think it would be important for you too, because you can then check how your curriculum sort of meets the requirements of the, uh, of the workplace. Uh, it seems that more than half of our interviewees stated that higher education often lacks the goal-oriented character of industrial work. Uh, so basically, yes, you become linguists who are experts in a particular research field, but then you're lacking, often lacking technical and transferable skills, like problem solving and whatnot. So it's not just a matter of getting a, a very high grade in your semantics class, let's say, where you're doing formal logic. It's also being able to transfer this knowledge into more practical tasks. Uh, the industry plays emphasis on, on a potential employee's versatility. So don't be surprised if you don't know anything about programming, but you get hired because you have proven that you can like uh, coordinate a team and then uh, do project management and do like X number of things. And then the company offers you uh, some training in programming or whatnot. Uh, there is a need to provide quantitative data analysis training. Traditionally, linguistics has been like Theoretical linguistics and formal linguistics uh, has not really dealt with statistics and, 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 and whatnot. Uh, it seems that there is an increasing need in the industry to engage with quantitative analysis rather than qualitative analysis. Uh, and uh, obviously, a very important um, uh, aspect that the old interviewees underlined was that uh, we need to include in our curricula courses that have to do with data handling, not just how you analyze the data, but also how you can get like, I don't know, 20, 100,000 words uh, worth of content and need to organize in, in a way that can be analyzed later, and also how to manage a project. So like work more with task-based um, with task-based problems that, that, you know, people can solve in groups or whatnot. Uh, 
Uh, so all in all, all interviews believe that what seems to be lacking the most from existing curricula in linguistics is specialized training that will enable graduates to think outside the box and come up to, with their own solutions to typically to typical industry workflow problems. And I think that this is a very, very important uh, take home message because effectively, um, when you're studying, you know, you want to solve a problem and, you know, you, you, you're doing great at it. But then when you go into, into a company, they will just tell you, oh, we have a problem, a bug in this particular problem, or we have a problem with this particular client who wants to do X and Y. You need to, to be able to think for a solution on your own. Like you won't find it in the books, you'll find it in, in forums, you'll find it in, you know, you need to be creative. And I think that this is something that really needs to be included more uh, in, in the curricula that you're currently studying in order for you to be able to be more employable. Now, uh, finishing off, what we did and the, this, the whole purpose of this project uh, was of this needs analysis was to identify, and uh, again, the transition is lost, so you're gonna see everything. It's a bit messy now, but anyway, uh, what we wanted to identify is a profile for the linguist of the 21st century. Uh, basically, uh, what we call this person is the language data and project specialist. This is not the title of a job. This is basically how we envisage, you know, someone who would be very employable and very, you know, easy to get a job in the, in the career, uh, what kind of competencies they would need to have. Uh, and these competencies include not just the ability to analyze language, but also the ability to handle data and the ability to run projects and oversee projects as, as a coordinator or whatnot. Now, in order, in, in terms of the knowledge, skills, and competencies, we identified seven different areas of skills and competencies that are needed. So apart from disciplinary, uh, which would be your linguistics, you know, your linguistics background, the, the, the knowledge of a specific language you want to work on or translation interpreting or whatnot, you also need to have data-oriented knowledge skills. And when we're talking about data here, again, these are general categories. You don't need to have all of these in order to find a job. I mean, it's a mix and match situation. So uh, by, by data-oriented skills, we are talking about your ability to collect, manage, curate, and analyze language data, knowledge of statistics and familiarity with data standards, which is actually quite important came up in the interviews as well. Like your, your knowledge of particular rules and legal frameworks that apply when it comes to, um, to, to working with data more generally. Uh, then we identified this really important in their cultural skills, uh, which were highlighted by many of the companies, perhaps because some of them were also, you know, localization companies and translation companies where you need to have an awareness of specific cultural context and cultural differences, and you need to exhibit cultural agility, which is actually really important because when working with language, you know, messages can just fly around uh, very easily. Uh, then transversal skills, these apply, these are not just specific to linguistics um, uh, graduates, uh, creative and innovative thinking, problem solving skills, presentation skills, writing for different audiences are highly important. Uh, then technical skills, obviously here we're talking about resources, technologies, NLP, uh, perhaps knowing a programming language or being familiar with how programming works is also really important. Uh, Research-oriented skills, this is what you actually have the most, I would imagine, being linguists and, you know, knowing how to create, to, to design a, a research project, being able to come up with hypotheses, analytical thinking and all this stuff. Uh, and then uh, accessing and processing information critically. And finally, organizational skills, which are more related to project management and, uh, and entrepreneurship and this sort of thing that are really important. These are all the skills that, you know, collectively would make, you know, a very successful career. But then in order to identify particular roles that graduates of linguistics might be able to um, uh, graduate linguists might be able to, you know, to fulfill and, and take on uh, when uh, joining the, uh, the workforce. Uh, we identified four different profiles for particular um, for, for particular job positions that might open. And these again are not mutually exclusive, but we, we sort of think that these are gradually going from an entry level position to a more higher level position. So let me just start with the first one. The first one 
we uh, we call the language data and project specialist, uh, and this we we think is a, is a more um, um, you know entry level uh, position, so to say. I do apologize about the bells. Uh, so um, here we can see that what we're talking about is someone who can work with data. Uh, so collect data, uh, transcribe audio files, annotate linguistic data, um, and explore language data and analyze them. Uh, so these are, yeah, these are some skills then uh, being able to engage in, in, in low level analysis of uh, uh, the data, uh, such as translation, interpreting, localization, post editing, uh, developing and analyzing and testing software technological tools and whatnot. Uh, uh, so this is the technical aspect of this position. Uh, Research-oriented uh, position, uh, research-oriented um, skills would have to do with language data research. The 21st century linguist could easily work as a language data and project specialist. And for this, they would need technical data-oriented organizational and research-oriented skills. Here, you may be wondering where are the disciplinary skills. These are, you know, these are actually all over the place. Like, unless you're a linguist, unless you have specialist knowledge, you wouldn't be able uh, to, to work with, uh, with data uh, of this sort. Uh, then, when moving on, uh, yeah, and here are the four subprofiles that I was talking about before. And here we'll see what kind of skills you would need more in order to, uh, to, to be able to, to sort of get this position uh, in the industry. Uh, when we're talking about the language data analyst, we're talking about someone who would be dealing more with language data collection, annotation, and analysis. This is usually thought of as, as an entry-level position. Uh, and for this, the most important thing, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, yeah, it was supposed to be a whole transition so on my slides, but anyway, so the most important key, uh, skill here would be data-oriented competencies, ability to collect, manage, curate, and analyze linguistic data, statistics, familiarity with data standards, and whatnot. So this is the most important one, hence the uh, full line around it. Uh, then you would need disciplinary skills, obviously, because you would be dealing with language data. Intercultural skills are quite important, and transversal skills are important too. And technical skills are quite important because you need to be able to work with tools in order to analyze, you know, annotate, and, and collect this sort of data. Here, uh, research-oriented skills are not as important because you would be engaging in an analyst's role, so you wouldn't be thinking a lot about the research designer of the bigger picture, you would just have the data that you have to analyze, and organizational skill, skills seem to be um, even less important to us because um, effectively you'd be working as part of a team that does the analysis and then someone else, you know, sort of uh, collects and consolidates all the data. So this is an entry-level position, and we think that this entry-level position with the right sort of, um, uh, you know, help and, 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 and development of more skills can lead to, uh, the, to the position of a language data scientist. Uh, and uh, here, um, we're talking again about uh, uh, linguistic data and analyzing linguistic data, but here we're talking about having a bird's eye view of, of the data that you're, um, that you're analyzing or processing. Uh, so here, what's most important is the research-oriented uh, competence, like it took for you to be research-oriented in the sense that you would be able to sort of consolidate the analyst's outputs uh, and then uh, critically process the information that you get from there. Obviously, equally important here, data, data orientation and technical knowledge is, you know, is, is indispensable for this role because you have to not only get the output of the analyst, but also synthesize it in a coherent way. So you need to have these skills too. Uh, and then uh, obviously, you know, disciplinary, intercultural, and transversal skills are equally important um, too. Again, organizational skills are not as important for this particular role because you're not dealing specifically with how, you know, to, to, uh, how to spread out the tasks across the team or whatnot. <laughs> the fourth profile, the third profile, apologies, is that of the language data manager. And here is where 
uh, organizational skills start going a bit higher up. Now, here we're talking about a different, like, okay, so the, the specialist is a higher level low role in relation to the analyst. The manager is someone who deals a lot more with organization rather than the research. So you, you're not thinking about what you're gonna, what's gonna come out of this particular project that you're working with, right? Of, of this particular you know, thing that you're dealing with, but you're basically thinking about how to organize everyone in order to, uh, to, to come up with, uh, with results. Uh, so organizational skills are important, not as important. Again, the main thing here is data orientation, like to have to be able to deal with data and to know how to uh, distribute it and how to, uh, to, to, to curate it and, and analyze it. Technical knowledge, again, again, really important, and this remains stable. Um, however, here you're talking about a more organizational role as opposed to a more research-oriented one. And the final profile that we came up with is that of a language project manager. And here we're talking about the person who does not really deal with the technical details or is not interested so much in what the outcome of the process is going to be. So research goes back again, but is the one who organizes everyone and, and needs to have very strong project management skills in order to be able to come up with a quality product and whatnot. So organizational skills here are really important. And I think that from the industry, these are the most important sort of positions that you, uh, no, these are the higher paid, not important, sorry, apologies. Uh, these are the higher paid positions because these involve a lot of responsibility and you managing a lot of people. So basically the salary goes up to this one. Uh, again, this requires, and I'm pretty sure that from the mixes and all that, most people who are working as project managers would have told you that requires, you know, you taking baby steps in order to reach this level. But here, everything is pretty much important. The only thing that sort of fades a bit is your, you know, your, 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 um, uh, your research curiosity, so to say, like you have to, to make sure that the project goes through. So this takes like, it's a specialist who will try and make sense of how it works. Uh, again, all the skills are important, but not to the same uh, extent. I think that with this, I'm mistaken more than I. Uh, I think I can, you know, thank you all for your attention. I would like to invite you all to follow us on Facebook and, and, and on Twitter. Uh, we will be posting stuff as things come out. And if you want to have a look at the stuff that I talked about today, we have a bunch of reports uh, in our web on our website. Again, you'll find the um, the link uh, on the. Um, on the slides when they're posted. Uh, and the profiles are actually discussed in much more detail in our main report, which is the cumulative uh, report here. Thank you very much for your attention. I do apologize for all the technical mishaps and I'm ready to take, I, I don't know what's going on here. Probably it's summertime and everybody's going crazy. Um, Great, uh, thank you so much. That was super interesting. Um, I have to say, this is the first time I've seen data collection that really bears out what we've been saying to people over the last several years. I, I think the organizers of the LCL and other career linguists have been saying the same sorts of things that you are showing us is actually part of the data. So saying things like, <clears throat> you need to have a range of skills. Uh, project management is super important. You're not gonna find jobs necessarily with linguist in the title. It's so much broader than that. It, it's amazing to see this actually shown up as, you know, research that you've done. So this is it amazing. Is, for, for me, the most, for me, the most like a uh, mind numbing sort of like thing was that, you know, I, I came into the mixers. I, uh, you know, I, I heard people talk and whatnot, and I, I heard experiences. And then every time I sort of like, maybe I'm biased because I've been conducting this research now for yeah. a year, but every time it was sort of like confirming what we had already found. And I, I can yeah. remember the particular part of the research where, where this was found. And what for me was really surprising because, you know, don't forget, I'm also a linguist, I'm working as an academic, so I don't have a lot to do with industry. I'm just, I just have an interest in, in tools and technology and this sort of thing is that you know, it, it's really surprising to see that you have this idealized version when you're studying, like, you know, which is the academic dream, so to say, 
But then it seems that you don't need to be like a straight A student in order to be able to, to, to maximize your career opportunities. Like you, you need to be versatile. You need to be yes. like quick thinking, uh, quick on your feet. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Think. Yeah, the versatility is, is great. Um, I would like to encourage people to post their questions. Yeah, in, in the chat. I want to ask you one thing, though, before we, we jump to uh, maybe Jyoti. You know, you mentioned early on that one of the, the goals, the long term goals is to sensitize industry. Yeah. Do you have plans for that? Like, do you have a strategy for doing that? Because we want to do that, too, here in the U.S. And oh, wow. we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So any uh, contributions that you guys have, we would very much. Let's join sources. So basically the way to do this, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe it's my Mediterranean way of thinking, but I think better enough people will get you anywhere. So basically what we've done is when we applied for for this funding, uh, we did ask particular uh, companies, I think Google included, even though they never signed up in the end, but anyway, they, they are sort of partners uh, in the more general sense, uh, to act as associate partners. And by associate partners, uh, basically they would give us internships and this sort of thing. Then how we are tackling this right now is that because we're creating this learning content, I've asked most of them, and most of them have agreed to give us like tiny bits of their workflows, like something that, uh, that um, you know, that we can include in our curricula. Like instead of me coming up with a task for statistics, you know, why not get a task from Lionsbridge right. that they do every day and then I just change the numbers and, and, and the description and it becomes something that would introduce students to what they would face yeah. if they, like, you have a deadline for tomorrow and you need to, to crunch these numbers, you know, find the solution, something like this. So this to mimic. And I think that by including them and involving them, I mean, I, I don't know how it's going to pan out because, you know, we started, like they, they just learned about this two months ago and we're having our first meetings in, in September. I think that this way, because my impression is that they don't really know what a linguist is, right? I mean, they, they do understand that NLP is important. They do understand that computer science and if you have some linguistics in it is really nice. But I think that the other way around, it's not as widely, you know, because this is an IT sector, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think by identifying these and including them in the process of creating the curriculum and all this stuff, they, they are starting to also realize, at least in our cases, our partners, they're starting to also realize that, yes, lingu a linguist is really important. Do it, during the interviews, it was actually surprising that two of the partners did tell us that um, yeah, we're getting a lot, you know, of problems with our with our employees because they don't really know how to like they understand that there is a problem with something, but they don't know how to call it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the moment they show it to you, it's like, oh yeah, this is a morphology issue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So exactly. and then they, they, you can see them like sparking. Oh my God! So there is a term for this because I didn't even know what there was. So I think that by engaging in discussion with them and inviting them in events, I mean that's what we're doing basically, and, and telling them, listen. Give us a short description of something that your employees do. Like it doesn't need to be like confidential or you know something that's that's weird, like an everyday thing, and then we'll try and include it in the curriculum. So I think that it's, you know, I think that this is the way to go about it. And then obviously, I think that getting like in touch with with, with industrial partners and, and sort of asking them to offer an internships, like showcasing that students can do what they have in mind. Like, in Malta, we have a dedicated undergraduate human language technology program. So by, by, by getting partners from the industry to give placements to students, we are actually, you know, we're actually making our presence felt to, mm -hmm. to the industry. So our, our graduates get jobs easier yeah. that way. Great. That's so good. Uh, Jyoti, did you have a question? You can unmute yourself there. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Stavros. This was just incredible. I mean, my mind is blown. I, I just I think that nobody does this kind of uh, self reflexive work inside academia and certainly other disciplines are not as interested like I can't imagine showing this to my friends in sociology. Um, I, I don't know if people are interested in this sort of thing. And I think it, you know, it, it's funny, it, ma it made me think about how, uh, how as linguists, I think we often say, Oh, you know, my, my, my family or the industry or like, no one knows what I do. But then I'm yeah. realizing that I also don't know what, what people do. And this was kind of interesting to, to learn which skills are, are valuable in which, you know, in which uh, context. And so I'm curious about the, um, 
I'm well. I'm curious and a bit intimidated by the the centrality of of project management and uh, and things like that. Um, what were the three like? I projects? think yeah. I, I mean, yeah, if I mean I, no, go on if you. Uh, yeah, I, I just I'm I'm wondering. You know, like it seems like one of those things, project management and the. Uh, 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 related skills are are skills that a lot of people, linguists and non-linguists would would have or can claim to have. And and okay. so how do you showcase that in a way that actually makes you stand out? So basically, what what transpired from our survey because we did have a question that I mean we have like a, a particular question and whatnot. One question was, uh, would you prefer to have someone who has like pure linguistics, so like you know, expertise in the domain, theoretical? or a language, like a native speaker of a language, who's considered the language expert just because they were born and they speak, I don't know, Portuguese or whatnot, right? And it seemed like most of the companies opted, most of the companies, I can't speak for everyone, but, but the general pattern seems to be that most of the companies often opted for the cheaper solution, which would be someone who does have a degree, but is a native speaker. And then they run into troubles late, into trouble later on because they couldn't, again, describe what it is that they were doing. Like they would do the task well, but then they needed like the specialist knowledge in order to be able to, uh, to talk to that. Now, the other thing when it comes to, to project management, I think that the misconception is that we cannot possibly, like even as educators, I cannot like create a project manager out of me. What I can do is I can create a curriculum, like, you know, many universities do, that say, okay, team up, you're gonna be the leader, and sort of, you know, bring me this assignment, which involves like four parts within a month or something like this. And this sort of gives you an aptitude for this. I think that the project manager, even in the actual, like this, I, I don't know how the US works, but at least in, in the EU, usually you need to have experience in order to be able to tackle big projects. So basically you start off with an analyst role, which is sort of like an entry level position or an annotator or whatnot. And then the more, involved you get with the team and, 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 and whatnot, they will give you more responsibilities, which eventually will mean that they might tell you, okay, now we have this standalone thing and a team of three, manage them and see what happens. I think that it's not something like you should be like intimidated from the get-go, but I, I, for me, it's not even like, a, um, a, like a, an educational thing. It's more of a life sort of, you know, attitude thing, right? I mean, be ready to collaborate, be ready to be open to ideas. Like I know, and I know because I was like that 20 years ago, you know, the moment someone talked to me about statistics, I would be like, oh, no, no. But you know, now that I'm open to it, and now that I have some familiarity, I'm not a statistician or, and I'll never be a statistician because I'm a theoretical linguist, but then the extent to which you can understand how something works, you don't need to make it work. If you understand how programming or machine learning works, just that, like the basics, then you already have the first step. Like they, they will see that you're not good at machine learning, but as long as you can like coordinate a team of, of people who are really experts in this, they don't really care. That's, that's about the versatility we were talking about. So yeah, I think it's more about transversal skills and it's more about you know, having people come out of their shell and being able to, to, to try and test out and being able to say even no, right? I mean, you know, you're not expected to know everything. Like have a healthy attitude towards the business and then the business will... And I can, I can tell even from the discussions in the mixers and the office hours and whatnot, most employers do not expect you to be a Python expert. They do not expect you to be a project manager. They do not expect anything of you other than having, you know, showing that you're capable and that you want to learn and that you want to contribute. I, I think that's my get to be honest. Like that, yeah. That's my point. I, I wanted to mention you know, um, we as the, the Linguistics Beyond Academia actually did a survey of career linguists. Uh, Alex, if you want to talk about that for a minute, and it's a beginning to, to start that. But I mean, outside of what Upskills is doing and what we're doing, there is not a lot of data on this. I know, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, it's really, we, you know, it's really impossible to find stuff. Yeah, Alex, Thank you. do you want to yeah. uh, talk about that for a second? Sure, really briefly, because we're nearing the end of our time together, but I, I love how the work that we've done as the Linguistics Career Launch Organizing Committee and as the Linguistics Beyond Academia Group uh, really complements Stavros's achievement. Uh, Stavros was serving 
corporations across Europe and departments, uh, language and linguistics programs across Europe, what we've done has been to survey the career linguists primarily in the US North American space and find out from them where they are, what they're doing, what their titles are, what their career paths are, what their degrees were, and sort of chart those career paths through their can we share notes somehow? Yeah. <laughs> <It'd be more laughs> than... <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to refer everybody here to that first session we did on the on day one. Uh, Emily Pace and I yeah. presented the results of that survey in career opportunities for linguists. And we absolutely yeah. those slides are up. We'll share them with you, Stavros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll slides up later. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, I think great. Paulina has a question. Sure. Alina. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Uh, first of all, thanks for all of this work. It's very insightful. It's very inspirational. Uh, it's something that I, I kind of would like to get younger and hope for this kind of program to come up to live and study it. But uh, thinking about that, I wonder um, if the, um, the project would involve a certain research on or if it's not involved, what would be your opinion about who will be in charge of teaching this kind of program? <laughs> because uh, nowadays we don't like, like for example, here that we have already PhD students, master's students, uh, even bachelor students that we don't have those skills. So we cannot just apply to get a like uh, professor okay, position yeah. to do that. So what do you think about that? So basically one of the, one of the main sort of aims of the, of the EU these days, it seems. I mean, like we were the highest sort of like ranked program, I think, when we applied and whatnot. And it's because we're tackling employability. Like looking at other projects that can fund in, it seems that what, what seems to be like the desideratum these days is a modular approach, which means that we can create all this, like basically because it's an EU program, we will have to develop our materials and then share them with the world. So everybody would be able to uh, to take them on and, and, and adapt them and, and use them for their own courses. Now, modularity means in this in this sense that, you know, I don't necessarily think that, you know, every program can have project management, entrepreneurship, uh, machine learning, programming. I mean, otherwise you won't be doing linguistics, right? But I think that it's important to, to have, you know, to, 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 to be able to blend in stuff. Uh, so, for example, if you're a linguist, uh, you should have an option at least to do some machine learning or some programming or some localization course or something, you know, something that would give you some skills depending on your own needs. So we are emphasizing all this as more of electives, I would imagine, in a program of study. When it comes to who would be able to give them, I think that generally, I think that the system, at least, I don't know, I'm pretty sure in the US even more so than in Europe, you know, there is versatility, like we, we can get, I'm pretty sure that I don't have like machine learning experience, but I can easily ask someone from artificial intelligence to, to come over and give like three lectures. So what we're envisaging for these courses are, you know, bite-sized project-based uh, teaching that will give you an appreciation of the field rather than you becoming an expert in Python or whatnot, right? You being able to sort of recognize how it works. Like, you know, you figure out how it works. And then if you want, there are a lot of self-study things out there and MOOCs and, and whatnot that you can mm -hmm. get the knowledge from. Uh, but I think that what we need to fight in the first instance is the fear of statistics, the fear of, uh, of programming, the fear of all that, because we're, we're dealing, normally we're dealing with art students and humanities who, you know, who, who, who select these like degrees because they are sort of afraid of, of hard science and whatnot. And I, I, you know, I think that, you know, this is, we need to tread lightly. I don't, I don't expect, you know, a program to just become computation. I wouldn't want it even like for my own sake, like, uh, but when it comes to, to, to teaching them, I think that like the way we are developing, this is going to be blended learning and we should eventually, I don't know whether we will, but eventually we should be able to sort of compare notes and even contribute to each other's programs. Like if someone from Belgrade asks me to give like three sessions, I would normally do it even if they weren't a part of a project. So I don't see why that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that absolutely. would be a problem, yeah. So uh, I'm sorry to cut off this great chat. Um, I, I have one more extremely quick question and then I'm gonna close this up. Stavros, the thing that you mentioned in Serbia that's happening, yeah. is that gonna be in English or multiple languages? It's actually going to be okay. So it's it's going to be in English, basically. Uh, I'm not sure how we are, how we're going to get 
like we have funding for this sort of thing. So students from all of our universities will be able to attend it. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but but if you follow us <laughs> on these <laughs> links here, sure. uh, and uh, we will get more information. Let me okay. just stop sharing okay. as well. Um, uh, yeah, this this will happen in July 2023, and it should be open. I mean. Hopefully, COVID. You know, yeah, okay, great. Um, just and the other, to... just another, just the final, <laughs> like this is also supposed to be blended learning, which means that it will be an online version too. So I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to set up like a, even a virtual school great. right awesome. after the summer school. That's great. For... Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been terrific. Mm -hmm.